Hello, my name is Merle Gray. Welcome to my new show, Tea Series. Each episode I will be reviewing or discussing a different type of tea or tea related topic. I aim to explore, review and appraise tea from every corner of the globe and really bring you up to speed with the exciting world of teas. So with no further ado, ado I will be introducing the Mug of the Week. Mug of the Week! Today, I have something not at all out of the ordinary. You know it as a staple of the British supermarket shelves. That's right, it's good old PG Tips. First debuting in 1930 under the brand name pre Gestee and marketed as a digestive aid, to take before dinner, Grocer soon abbreviated the product to PG. However, in 1945, the British government and their labelling regulations ruled out describing the product as a digestive aid as there was no scientific proof that PG tips had any such effect. Apparently, Clement Attlee had time to wrap up the war against the Japanese in Burma and intervene in PG tips marketing strategy. What a guy! In 1995, PG Tips introduced a tetrahedron shaped bag known as the Pyramid Bag, which was revolutionary for the time. The unusual shape allowed the tea 50% more room to move about and therefore for further infusion of the tea. This was truly the Tiger Woods of domestic tea. In a good way. Controversially, PG Tips is now most remembered for its long running advertising campaign where chimpanzees were dressed up as people and forced to move pianos. Some see this as an animal rights abuse. Well, this is what I have to say on the matter. Whilst the anatomy of the chimpanzee's spinal column is far from optimum for moving pianos, or indeed any heavy furniture beyond a household poof, what we must consider is that these chimps would have otherwise been in a cage in a zoo unable to experience creature comforts such as tea or comfortable clothing, or they'd be in Equatorial Africa, where the chimps would have been vulnerable to malaria, poachers or lions. Now that we have the history of the product out of the way, it's time to show me the package! This box is reasonably pliant and an appealing green, white and red colour scheme. Not unreminiscent of the Italian flag, actually. The packaging states here that cuppers taste better together, but I don't think that can be conclusively proven either way. And here is the tea bag. As you can see, the bag's a very ordinary design, with no strings attached, literally or in a figurative sense. It's hardy and will resist any kind of strain short of the most deliberate tug I don't know my own strength. Uh, but the important part is the bag will definitely survive the stirring process and facilitate the squeezing out of as much tea into the mixture as possible. It's all over the carpet now. Here's one I made earlier. Nice! I'd describe it as warm, refreshing and sweet. It has a sort of a tasteful thickness to it. Not at all weak or bitter in any way. But then again, I did brew this myself, so I do know how to tend it to my own personal needs. Ugh. As I thought, there's a bitter, soapy aftertaste, but that might just be down to me not washing or scrubbing the cups properly. On the bright side, I can imagine how much better it would have tasted if I was just more careful to remove any excess suds before the tea making process. This is sort of PG tips a la fairy liquid. Good sort of uh, microcosm of the average British household. I got a box of these at Home Bargains for a very reasonable £1.50. 80 in a box by the way, which will last the average consumer at least two months or the average builder one week. In conclusion, PG tips may not be exotic or anything special, or righteous among the tea bags, but it is a stalwart product of the shopping bags and pantries of the common man in Britain, 
and has a sort of a charm and intrinsic value that's not to be sniffed at. I've been Merle Grey, well I still am, and this has been T-Series. Check out more content on this channel above my head.